This lecture video is on rational exponents. And so we're going to take a look at what that means. Anytime you see the word rational, you should always think fraction. So we're going to be looking at exponents that are fractions. And so in general, if you have a and it's raised to the m divided by n power, what this means is that um, you have the power on the top and the root on the bottom. And so notation-wise, a to the m divided by n is going to be the nth root of a to the m. So again, the numerator is always your exponent, and the denominator is always your root. You can also write it in this way. Um, you can write the nth root of a and then raise it to the mth power out on the outside. So if you're going to be evaluating some number, then this is the best form to use. If you're going to have it with exponents, then this form would be the best. Okay, um, and we're just going to review the properties of exponents. So when you're doing a product, um, and as long as these two numbers are the same, then you add exponents. If you're dividing, then you subtract exponents. When you're taking something that's being raised to a power and then you raise it to another power, you multiply those exponents together. If you're multiplying two things together and raising that product to a power, then you raise both of those items to that power. So a to the nth times b to the nth. Works the same way with division. a divided by b, that fraction being raised to the nth, is the same as raising the numerator to the nth and the denominator to the nth. And then um, anything raised to the zero power is one. If you have a negative exponent, a raised to the negative first, then that's exactly the same as 1 over a to the positive nth. Or if you have a fraction, a over b being raised to a negative power, then you would flip this fraction upside down, and then that exponent becomes positive. So a over b raised to the negative nth is the same as b over a raised to the positive nth. And then you can raise the b to the nth and the a to the nth. So that's just a quick review of the properties for exponents. So we want to rewrite um, each of these expressions with radical notation and then simplify if we can. And so 1 49th raised to the 1 half. And so this is your exponent. So the exponent is 1. And this is our root. So we're going to be taking the square root of 1 over 49. And it's to the first power, so um, we don't need an exponent there. And you can take the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. And the square root of 1 is 1. And the square root of 49 is 7. So this simplifies down to 1 7. This next one, we have negative 8 raised to the negative 1 3rd. So first, I want to take care of the fact that this is a negative exponent. So we're going to write it as 1 over negative 8. And then that would be to the positive 1 third. And so the denominator is our root. So that's going to be a cubed root of negative 8. And the numerator is 1, so there's no exponent. So we have 1 over the cubed root of negative 8 is negative 2. And again, you can write this as 1 over negative 2, or you can write the negative sign out in front, negative 1 half. Our next example here, we have 16x. That whole thing is being raised to the 1 half power. And so that's going to be the square root of 16x. Now, we can take the square root of 16, but we can't take the square root of x. And so you can write this as the product of two square roots, the square root of 16 times the square root of x. And the square root of 16 is 4. And then that's times the square root of x. And you can't simplify the square root of x. Square root, or 1 over 49, and we want the negative 1 half power. So to take care of that fact that we have a negative exponent, we want to flip 1 over 49 upside down. So that would be 49 over 1. And 49 over 1 is the same as 49. 
And the one half power means we're doing the square root. And the square root of 49 is 7. Here we have negative 8 raised to the positive 1 third. And so that's going to be the cube root of negative 8, which is negative 2. And our last one here, 16x to the negative 1 half. So this time, the 16 is not being raised to the 1 half. Here, the 16x was in parentheses, so both the 16 and the x were being raised to the 1 half. This time, the 16 is not being raised to the 1 half, just the x is. And so we have 16, and then x to the negative 1 half means that you want this to be written as 1 over x to the positive 1 half. So that's going to drop it down to the denominator. And um, x to the 1 half is the square root of x. So we get 16 over the square root of x. Now we're going to simplify these if we can. And we want to write all of our answers with positive exponents. So we don't want radical notation. Now we want to keep um, them written with exponents instead. So we have 8 raised to the negative 2 thirds. So first I want to take care of the fact that I have a negative exponent. So that's going to be the same as 1 over 8 to the positive 2 thirds. And so this denominator is our root. So we want the cubed root of 8. And the numerator is our exponent. And again, when you're doing this with numbers, you want this exponent outside because it's easier to take the root of a smaller number than it is a bigger number. So we want to do the power after we take the root. Cubed root of 8 is 2. And we're squaring that, so that's 2 squared. And so we get 1 fourth. Negative 64 raised to the negative 4 thirds. So again, take care of the fact that you have a negative exponent. So that's going to be 1 over negative 64 raised to the positive 4 thirds. And again, the denominator is our root, so that's going to be a cubed root. And then we want to take it to the fourth power. And the cubed root of negative 64 is negative 4. And we want to raise that to the fourth power. And negative 4 to the fourth is positive 256. So we get 1 over 256. Our next one, we have 1 over x raised to the negative 2 thirds. So a couple ways you can think about this. And once you do a bunch of these, it'll make it easier. But um, so this would technically be 1 over 1 over x to the positive 2 thirds. And when we divide by a fraction, we multiply by its reciprocal. So that would be 1 times flipping this upside down gives you x to the 2 thirds over 1, which is just x to the 2 thirds. So basically what happens is if you move the position of um, a variable raised to a power, um, either from the denominator to the numerator or from the numerator to the denominator, it changes the sign of the exponent. So you could just say, well, because this is negative, you move it up to the numerator, and that will make it x to the positive 2 thirds. 3 over 4x to the negative 5 halves. So again, we have this negative exponent in our denominator. So we just move it up to the numerator. And that would make it positive 5 ninths. And then the 4 stays down there, because it's only the x being raised to the negative 5 ninths. Another way that you could write this would be 3 fourths x to the 5 ninths with the 5 ninths written at x to the 5 ninths written after the 3 fourths. Our next one here, x to the 4 thirds times x to the 5 thirds. So when we're multiplying, we add exponents. And we do that um, no matter what kind of exponents they are. So this is going to be x to the 4 thirds plus 5 thirds, which gives us x to the 9 thirds. Oops. And then we can simplify this fraction. 9 thirds is the same as 3. And so that would be x cubed. 
y to the 5 thirds times y to the negative 1 third. So again, we're going to add our exponents, 5 thirds plus a negative 1 third. And that gives us y to the 4 thirds. And you can't simplify 4 thirds at all, so we'll just leave it like that. x to the 3 fifths divided by x to the 1 tenth. So when we're dividing, we subtract the exponent, so that's going to be 3 fifths minus 1 tenth, and it's always the numerator power minus the denominator power. And in order for us to subtract these, we need a common denominator, and the common denominator between 5 and 10 will be 10, and 3 fifths would be the same as um, 6 tenths. You need to multiply the 5 by 2 to get to 10, and so you'd also have to multiply this 3 by 2. Minus 1 tenth, and so this gives us, oops, x to the 5 tenths. And 5 tenths reduces down to 1 half. Our next one, we have 81 to the 1 fourth x to the 2 thirds, and then we have to cube all of that. And um, 81 to the 1 fourth is the fourth root of 81. And so we need something that we can multiply to itself four times to give us 81, and that's 3. And so that's really the same as 3. So we have 3x to the 2 thirds, and then we're cubing that. So we need to cube the 3 and we also need to cube the x to the 2 thirds. 3 cubed is 27. And when we raise a power, one power to another power, we multiply exponents. And 2 thirds times 3 is 2, so that would be x squared. Our next one here, a to the 3 fourths times a to the negative 1 half divided by a to the 4 thirds. So I would take care of the numerator first. And we're multiplying. And so when we multiply, we need to add. And in order for us to add these two fractions, we need a common denominator. That common denominator is going to be 4. So it would be 3 fourths plus a negative, And 1 half is the same as 2 fourths. And that's being divided by a to the 4 thirds. So 3 fourths plus a negative 2 fourths is 1 fourth. So we have a to the 1 fourth divided by a to the 4 thirds. And division means you subtract, and we need a common denominator. The common denominator is going to be 12. We need to multiply the 4 by 3 to get 12, and so do the same to the 1. That gives us 3 twelfths. The 3 here has to be multiplied by 4, so do the same thing to the 4 here, so that gives us 16 twelfths. So we're going to have 3 twelfths minus 16 twelfths. And 3 twelfths minus 16 twelfths is negative 13 twelfths. And we never want negative exponents, so that means that we need to write it as 1 over a to the positive 13 twelfths. Write that a little bit better. x to the 10 thirds divided by x to the fourth, and that x to the fourth is being raised to the 1 third. When you take a power raised to another power, you have to multiply exponents. And 4 times 1 third is 4 thirds. Division means that you subtract exponents. This is x to the 10 thirds minus 4 thirds. And 10 thirds minus 4 thirds is 6 thirds. And 6 thirds redu reduces down to 2. So that would be x squared. Our next example here, so we have 3x to the 1 fifth. All of this is being raised to the fourth power. So we need to take 3 to the fourth and x to the 1 fifth and raise that to the fourth, divided by x to the 3 tenths. 
3 to the 4th is 81. And x to the 1 fifth raised to the 4th, multiply those exponents, gives you x to the 4 fifths. And then we're dividing by x to the 3 tenths. Whoops. So now we need to take care of dividing these two variables. And so when we divide variables, we subtract their exponents, and we need a common denominator. Four-fifths is the same as eight-tenths, so we have eight-tenths minus three-tenths. And I have 81. Eight-tenths minus three-tenths is five-tenths. Whoops, I forgot my x. Sorry about that. And five-tenths simplifies down to one-half, so we have 81x to the one-half. Okay, so this is our last example. We have, and you might want to pause the video and see if you can do this one on your own, and then um, start the video back up to see if you did it correctly. So we have a to the negative third, b squared, all of that's being raised to the one eighth, and a to the negative second, b, and all of that's being raised to the negative one fourth. So I would take care of raising the a to the negative third and b squared to the one eighth first. That means you're going to multiply their exponents. I'll just write that out. Negative third, raise that to the one eighth. b squared, raise that to the one eighth. And then a to the negative second, we need to raise that to the negative one fourth. And the b needs to be raised to the negative one fourth. And negative 3 times 1 eighth, that gives us a to the negative 3 eighths. And then b, 2 times 1 eighth, gives you um, 1 fourth. And negative 2 times 1 fourth gives you a to the, and now we're multiplying, so that's going to be positive 2 fourths, which is the same as 1 half. And then b to the negative 1 fourth. Okay, so we have a to the negative 3 eighths, and we're dividing that by a to the 1 half. Negative 3 eighths, and now we're going to subtract 1 half, but we want that in terms of eighths, so that's going to be 4 eighths. And then we have b to the 1 fourth, and then minus a negative 1 fourth. And negative 3 eighths minus 4 eighths is negative 7 eighths. And 1 fourth minus a negative 1 fourth, so this becomes addition, so that's 2 fourths. This is positive, so it'll stay in the numerator. And we also want to simplify this fraction, so that'll make that a 1 half. And this is negative, so we're going to drop it down to the denominator. So that's going to be a to the positive 7 eighths down in the denominator. So that is. Um, the end of the lecture on rational exponents. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.